gonna have me, don't give me such a good friend. Then Brother Shaq walked in the studio and said, Brother Happy Boy Day O T. Right on, man. Oh man, what a what a blessing though. First of all, man, I am you know, I ain't saying I get giddy, you know, because that's like, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm 100%, right? But I, but I, I'm, I'm going to leave that. I'm leave that, I'm leave that I don't want to get no trouble. I'm, I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm 100%, right? So I ain't going to say clear. But, clear. <laughs> but, 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 man, we got Brother Shaq in this. There are some people, man, that God put on this earth, right, that they are so profound, man, in, in the way they make us feel and the way they make us think. Uh, that they impact our energy and our spirit, man. And mm -hmm. you're one of those kind of brothers for man. me, man. So Thank uh, you, man. It's an honor, Brother Shaq, to have you in the studio, man, especially on such a serious topic. Yeah, right? yeah. likewise. And likewise. For, for anyone who may not know uh, who Brother Shaq is, uh, who, who, who the True Love Movement is, please give them a brief uh, on it uh, so we can then get into this conversation. Definitely. And, and first, before I even dig into that, man, I wanted to, again, wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. A, a belated birthday and, and appreciate you for, for having me. And also appreciate you for your commitment to doing this because, you know, it was early this morning, man. And, uh, you know, they don't call this the, the Good Morning Show for nothing. Yeah. Like, people don't, I don't know if everybody understands the kind of commitment it takes to do this every single morning. Thank you. you know? And for yeah. Lee, too. You know what I'm and, saying? Like, that's there major. No, there ain't no doubt about it, man. That's major. You know, I did it for a week, for about six and a half, <laughs> once a week for six years. But it wasn't early in the morning. It yeah. wasn't consecutive days. So I wanted to thank you for being a, that's an anchor. You know what I'm saying? That's I a real that. anchor. So thank you for that example. Thank bro, you, and that consistency, man. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, True Love Movement is... Um, was was uh, was the brainchild and the, the concept of, of Ayana Molina, Mama Fire. Mama Fire. Um and uh it was to it was to uplift and empower initially black women, mm -hmm. uh black women and girls. And uh she was she was grooving with that for a while, but as these these sisters were evolving, you know, spirit told her well there needs to be something complimentary happening and she knew that you couldn't do that. So she reached out to me, who we'd known each other for, for decades prior. I mean, we right. essentially kind of grew up together in some ways, but um, to work with the men and the boys. And so that's what kind of expanded what True Love Movement was. And so, um, you know, we, we've done that now for a, a very long time, and it's become just more than essentially the the one-on-one -on -one mental health stuff mm -hmm. it's you know it's been radio it's you design curriculum yeah. do professional development it's, workshops it's been motivational books and poetry it's been right everything yeah, yeah the music right any kind of way to uh, improve the condition of our people and get the message across and the true love part of it has always been the self-love which now is a big buzzword absolutely um but but understanding that that is a very actionable thing well true love is actually sort of a movement i use it i hear it you know mm -hmm. I, I use the conversation i think you guys have been successful right on at that knowing that planning that see right on and, and, and those thoughts actually happened in many cases before the movement oh yeah man you know? definitely now, now now brother shack i'm gonna uh i think this this first of all this book this book release and resolving rape culture is important mm -hmm. uh we know that uh, there's a rise in uh domestic violence with all the attention that it's getting in our community oh yeah we know that amongst people of color specifically mm -hmm. black folk uh, mm -hmm. relationships are failing mm -hmm. uh, at a higher rate mm -hmm. uh, than they have before even with all of the information we know that when you talk to uh, attorneys and counselors and social workers, mm -hmm. that uh, as young as sixth, seventh, and eighth grade middle schools, oh yeah, uh, they're having a real, I guess I think real challenging in terms of relationships and friendships mm -hmm. between boys and girls, mm -hmm. and girls and girls and boys, right? And boys. So talk about you realizing that mm -hmm. and challenging us within our own community how we can resolve that, right? Well, well, thank you. That's a that's a, a good question. That's a, a lot of the basis for the work. What what inspired this was that um, as a as a good black man, mm -hmm. as a good black man, early on, uh, when when uh, Mama Fi and I were were a couple. So early on, when we were a couple, she would say things to me like, uh, I, I may say something. She say, you know, King, that's patriarchy, mm -hmm. and I was like, nah. She said, no, that's patriarchy. And so I was like, all right, I'd, I'd chill out a little bit. And, and, but I wouldn't buy it. I said, that sounds foolish to me. Because if it was patriarchy, I'd know it. I'd tell you. I'm going to let you know. Especially a conscious brother. I'm going to let you know it's patriarchy, right? I, I know that sounds very ridiculous right now. No, but, you're going somewhere. But at the time. Though, we do that. Oh, do we? Yeah, so at the time, <laughs> absolutely. So at the time, 
you know, I was thinking, hmm, she keeps saying this. And so, it, it, you know, she writes about that. She actually writes the foreword for this book. But, you know, she talks about that I wasn't ready to really look at myself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, over, over time, and it took, I've been writing this book for about six years. I say I've been working on the book, but the book really has been working on me. Right. That's what has happened. And so this, it, in, in writing it, it has liberated me in ways that I didn't even know I was bound. But I realized that, that you know, individually and personally, though I did not intend to, mm -hmm. I, was, I was really adding to the oppression, particularly of our, of our people, but particularly of black women and girls. Mm -hmm. And it was unbeknownst to me, but it was her having a, a, a very uh, a bad impact. And so um, as I, my, in my work, I listened to black men and boys, and they were talking the same kind of talk I was talking. And then I travel around and I listen to black men and boys and they talking the same kind of talk I'm talking. So we have this understanding that this is just how it is. So, you know, I'm a, one of these social scientists kind of cats. Yeah. Where does this come from? from? So I got to looking and then I realized that it is a, a, a part of a culture, but it's different for our people. Mm -hmm. It's different for our people because of the experience, the historical experience that we've had here in America. Explain that. Well... You know, like you were in opening up, you were talking about the, that these these things, the relationship challenges and the ways in which uh, even the young people relate to one another and mm -hmm. the complementary sexes kind of a thing. That ain't new. Mm -hmm. So if I go back to the genesis and I look at how we came to be here in America in this in this situation, I mean, we were dehumanized. Good point. Uh, you know, and, and I should know that because Don Burrell in his book Brainwash, man, mm -hmm. that was a great ad advertiser, one of the largest African-American halftime branders in the world. Mm -hmm. When he retired, he wrote the book Brainwash. He has a whole chapter mm -hmm. uh, uh, dedicated to relationships and, right. and, and said that even, he says, it's very difficult for black men and women to have unconditional relationships the way we've been conditioned and trained. Right. There is this deep-rooted mistrust on both sides yes. because we were raised in America like that. Yes. Yes. Damn, Brother Shaq, I got you. On the on the plantation and some of the the narratives from the the freed in, uh, formerly enslaved African people in their in their narratives, mm -hmm. they would, the the brothers would write because I was doing that research. The brothers would write how they they made sure to not marry a woman on their plantation because they didn't want to see her being violated by the slave master. The issue wasn't that she was being violated; they just didn't want to have to see that. And that so that's that is that old because feeling disempowered dehumanized and also got to consider what kind of a tension that brought along with black women because you know brother uh baba zach ramsey maybe 10 years ago he was talking about that part of the reason that black women seem to be so angry with black men is because from their understanding we let this happen we let this happen and then we want to turn around and oppress her you know what i'm saying and so you know that's a very plausible ugly kind of truth, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, depending on your perspective, but we can't ignore that, you know, in terms of how that influences the way we relate today in the, the what seems like a presumptive adversary relationship between black men and black women. So resolving rape uh, uh, culture, I wrote a piece several years ago called The Truce, mm -hmm. uh, because when I came home from vacation, man, uh -huh. I, I, was, I looked at my own relationship, uh -huh. and I had a closer look, you know, yeah. when sometimes when you sit down, you get to you things, see. things are clear, right? Mm -hmm. And I wrote the truce, and, I, and I, it, it was centered on calling a truce between black men and black women. Uh -huh. Because I kept hearing stuff like, you know, they're all like this. Right. You know, right. Like all of them the same. Right. And then, I, I, and then men, we wouldn't get it. Right. You know, when the sisters would say, hey, hold on a second, right? right. You're exhibiting certain behavior. We're right. like, well, that's just the way. That's how it is. That's just the way that's, it is. That's the culture. Right. That is the culture, the way that we live. So I was interested in the things that, that contributed to this culture, which essentially has always been about invisibilizing, you know, those women and girls who are now politically designated as black. Mm -hmm. The invisibilization meaning um, I, I came up with something I coined the, the good man syndrome. Mm -hmm. and, and essentially what the good man syndrome is about is how, you know, you know, as like I know from people who have sometimes gotten in trouble that... Being a good man and, and looking, uh, and being a good man is important, but appearing to be a, be good, a good man, man is very rewarding. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so. And it's two different things. Two totally different things. And just to add to that, neither one of them are defined by a black woman because the black woman don't define that. We still decide what's good and right. what ain't good without any of her input and then impose that definition on her and tell right. her she should not only accept it, 
but uplifted and praise us for that. In spite of. Yeah, and see, more invisibilization, but with good intention. I've never heard it put like that. Great term. So, so, so the good man syndrome is the kind of thing where, like, I, there was some brothers having a, a spirited discussion just not long ago, and there was a, a one of the brothers was had, wanted to connect with uh, uh, one of his partner's sisters, and the dude was like, the other cat was like, nah, I wouldn't do that, man, you know, or at least ask the brother if that's cool right. or whatever, and so. He thought that was the right thing to do, and it, it sounds like the right thing to do because that's how we was raised. You know, you don't do that. But it's like what 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 the the other cat didn't see was, yeah, she's his sister, but she's a person. Like she's a human being right. that isn't owned she, by she her brother, is. right? <laughs> and and so he don't give her permission, permission. or and, and and but again, in trying to be right and be good. Mm -hmm completely invisibilized the whole human being that was the woman to say I'm doing the right thing because I'm making sure me and her brother are cool. She's nowhere in that. Right. She's completely invisibilized, but that's part of the socialization. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if we don't see her on that, we're not going to see her on anything else because we've been conditioned that she's not really human. Brother Shaq, you're saying something, man. And first of all, thank you uh, for the work and the study that you put behind this. Right, right on. In listening to you, what you're saying is that even though this 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 area of Me Too, this this age of celebrating mm -hmm. uh, uh, sisters and, and who mm -hmm. accomplish, we acknowledge them and we celebrate them on our terms. Absolutely, not on, and not all of them, and not not only, and we don't, and and no, we, no, but you actually had me th think about the standard of a black woman mm -hmm. when I look at videos, when I look at artists, mm -hmm. uh, when I look at their dancers, when I look at in many cases their contributors. Uh, very rarely is it a brown or black woman. Right. That's not that's not it. Not anymore. Unless they want to sell something else. else. See, black women are to be monetized. Right. They've still been commodified. That, right. And the reason why is that is the history. That's the legacy of, of those women who are now politically designated as black, formally. So even when we celebrate them, it's not on the it's on it's on house terms and our standards. Because we have a vision of what they're supposed to be there, and they have no part of that. Though. But I'm saying they, this has been no respect of who they are as human beings, and they don't define that. That's cold, yeah, brother. Shay. I know, <laughs> I know it's cold, man. I know it's cold, and part of the reason is that we've not had to think about it because they've never, they've never been self determined. Man, I ain't no bad dude, man. I not take at care all. Of you. I'm a good person, man. Right on. Me too. But it, but it, but it's our standard. But it's a culture. It's just a it's a normative culture. We should have had three hours dedicated to this topic, <laughs> but we're going to take a break, and when we come back, uh, resolving uh, yes. rape culture. That's a really hard term to yeah. use, but yeah. I know you did it for a reason. Absolutely. Right? You know that. Because rape ain't just physical. No. And, and then rape is here as an acronym. We use this as an acronym. Brother Shaq, man, after the break, not just one of the leaders of the True Love Movement, man, but him and Mama Fire, one of the leaders of... Uh, how we think and how we feel and how we relate to each other. We'll be back after the break. Right on. Good stuff. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a, a journey with this. Shaq, man. I've been so guilty, man, of saying, hey, man, you know, but I'm a good brother, man. I'm good, man. I take care of you. I know. I know. And That's believe in that shit. Yeah, because because we, they, we're not challenged by anything because because we benefit, and I'll talk about that once we get back, we benefit from a, a very partial and limited provisional membership in the white man's patriarchy. See what I'm saying? D -d -d look, you know, you know what? Uh, man, this, we should have had an hour because this piece right now, as much as we're celebrating black women now, their social and economic standard is still one of the lowest in the nation. The lowest, so, so we will elect a woman, we'll put them up on a pedestal in terms of... Transactional. But in terms, but in, but in terms of their life, right, their economic yeah. life, women lead the, the, the nation, black women lead the nation in entrepreneurs. Yep. But not in gaining assets to capital and nope. staying, or staying in business. Because of, there's a culture around it. It isn't something that's wrong with them. There is a social construct that, that perpetuates this and then... We are rewarded for sustaining. Many black females who, who've headed major cities, man, who've been elected. Uh huh. Many of them, they're only one term. Right. The, we'll elect them and give them a chance, but we won't give them the chance that the man, a white woman, a white man get. But right. the standard is always higher. Much higher. But what did she do? I mean, what did she do to Different have these high standards? I'm just talking about even on the front end of it. Like, what did she do? You know what I'm saying? What did she do? Just like you were talking about, uh, you know, our current mayor right now. Even though she's done whatever she's done, she can't escape whatever this black woman experience is. 
You see what I'm saying? No matter what. No matter what, because the gaze on her is still, you know, they're still like, I knew it. She, you know, like, they, it's still that because like, she's a black like woman. they say, waiting to exhale, waiting, waiting for them to fail. Right. Because, of, because we don't think, we don't think anything of them. That's what I'm saying. We just don't, but we don't deal with it that way because we look at the superficial things and say, we elevated you. Well, in order for somebody to elevate you, you got to have the power to do that. Wow. You know? Wow. Good, good stuff. Right good on. Stuff. Can you hear? Huh? Can you hear? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're back. Welcome back to the Good Morning Show. Uh, WDLK, 12.30 a.m. What New Orleans is talking about. Uh, man, one of our contributors on social media, someone who follows the show, uh, uh, Brother Dennis, man, just said that he's never really thought about those terms like that. And, mm -hmm. and, and he said, man, in being challenged to look at himself in the sand that he said, uh, he's going to make an effort to treat his, 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 his wife and treat his woman better. We don't take those moments to think about that standard, Brother Shaq? Well, we don't have to. The, the way well, hold on a second. <laughs> we, what should we... I mean, what's the penalty for violating a black woman? Nothing. What's the penalty for messing over and disrespecting a black woman? Nothing. Well, brother's giving out merit badges for, for cheating and having more women than well, they're supposed to have. So that's what I'm saying. So there's no pressure. There's no incentive. There's no external motivation to do it. And because we have internalized this culture... What we're doing is normative. So we, we, we will salute the label player and pimp. We'll salute that label. But you know why we do that? Why? Because he he embodies everything that we look up to. You know, and because he embodies proverbial what I would what I called many years ago when I first started doing this work, our white daddy. Let's go to the line right now. <laughs> line number one, brother. Now, you're on with, uh, with uh, OC and brother Shaq, man. That is correct. Appreciate you. Thank you. Right. Right. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. I, I, the, the standards. That was, yeah, that was, that was a great point that that brother who's, who's an elder who's been on the planet for a, a long time, he's seen a lot of things and done a lot of things. And, and, and what he, he made the point. Mm -hmm. He made the point because what he was saying was, you know, brothers have desires to mm -hmm. do things for their women that their pockets mm -hmm. don't allow them right, to do. Right. And then, then they're judged for right. this or mm -hmm. that. But what he, what he didn't point out was what did that woman say she wanted? <laughs> Who asked the woman yeah. what she wanted, what was really important to her, what were her values and principles and the things that mattered most? We, no one asked. But then there's this thing about, well, I got to do this because I need to be perceived a certain way. Uh, Brother Shaq, I mean, timing could not be more perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, what does uh, rape, uh, uh, resolving rape culture, which is rape, what, what is the that? Acronym, the acronym, the yeah. acronym. So the acronym is the four elements. I won't give you all of them right. because because I want you to, of course, you, you're going to get that from the get book. The book right. And there's a workshop that right. goes that's been running for a couple of right. years. So there's, it's it's been out there. But I will tell you that um, 
the the A is for athletics and the E is for entertainment. Okay. I'll I'll give you that much. The, uh, brother said there are a couple. You know, uh, great August Wilson, great black black friend. When he did two trains, right? He talked about the dualities of life. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's always mm-hmm. one train on one track mm-hmm. and another on another track. You, you, you hope they would be going in the same direction, but they're not always. Uh, right. Right now, I'm seeing a couple of things happening, and and I, I want you to help us. To, Explain this. You sure. know, we're going to do a relationship draw. I think at the end of the week with uh, Dr. Walker and, uh, and, and the love uh, doctor, Dr. Rob, the love doctor man. Okay. Where we, it's, it's where we talk about relationships and what men or women expect, what they know and don't know. Right. But right now, there are a couple of trains moving right now. Mm-hmm. There are brothers, uh, black men, who are questioning their position in society right mm-hmm. now. And you know, mm-hmm. we're in those meetings. That's right. You know, we talk to them. They're wondering if they have a place or a space anymore, even with black women. Right. And then there's another group, man. I'm looking at some pastors. Uh, I'm looking at what uh, Minor Rogers and Pastor Andy Reaper mm-hmm. did. They're mm-hmm. filling the church with 200 men. Right. Saying we got to be better men. Uh-huh. I'm looking at what to- yourself and Torin Sanders mm-hmm. are doing. I'm seeing a level of co- consciousness, though. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So we can say that, you know, what you guys are doing, we're thinking about our place in our space? Absolutely. I, I mean, the consciousness has been raising, and that's inevitable. But what we're doing, though, is we're still missing the the, the main part of this discourse. Okay, well, what is that? In that we are we are still projecting. Like, when you said, where where is our place in society, right. for example... We, as black men, have a very limited, partial, and provisional, and conditional membership in the, the dominant culture, the mainstream white man's patriarch. Hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on, hold on a second, brother Shaq. So you're saying just the idea of being male, even if you're black male, puts you into, gives you some membership into white male society? Partial, partial, limited, and provisional, oh, so, well, so long as you sustain the, 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 the arrangement. See, that's the thing. See, there's been some confusion about, you know, how there's this thought about the so black So patriarchy man. can be patriarchy, right? N- not with cultural distinctions, but operating from a dominant, what, what the dominant culture has taught you about right. what patriarch, patriarchy ought to be. Well, the, the dominant culture that has oppressed you. you. So, <laughs> so we've been oppressed. I mean, when so you... So then you oppress everything. Well, you want to be like what I was saying before, your, your like, white daddy. You want to be like Pop. Your white daddy. I mean, you think about manhood for, for everybody in America was not defined. Black man, there's no black man in the, in the history of, of so-called black men in America who defined himself for himself and had everybody accept his definition of who, what that was. We were defined by the people who oppress us. Mm-hmm. So our highest aspiration is to emulate them, period. So where do we go from here? Well, we do some introspective work. Okay. And... In terms of solutions, now dig this. This may even sound controversial. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> like, listen, <laughs> listen to black women. <laughs> listen to black women. With both ears? With both ears. And here's why. Because nobody knows better than they do I'm only serious, how to man. survive and get out of a jam. Because that's what they've done for the entire 400 years we've been here. Black women have. Nobody's been more oppressed than them. Nobody. Even on the plantation, Oliver. When, when the, 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 the slave master wanted to chill everybody out, what did he do? He, he created the what? The Negro preacher, right? <laughs> the Negro preacher had his own flock, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. He, had, he, had, he was a liaison between the master. And he had their Bible. That's right. And, what did the, and, and their Bible said, what about women? And what did the black woman get? Nothing. She got somebody to rule over her because the man is the head. So see, now this was the first time there was an elevated status for an enslaved African through the Negro preacher. And we put wrapped it up with Jesus. See how that goes? Stop it, bro. It's it's in the book. <laughs> so, so 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 even from that, but there was this there's this there's always hold been on, a, hold on, an elevation. Up, like, look, you don't want to talk. Shit, <laughs> shit, it's hard, man. Shit, we it's use, hard, bro. We use Jesus to oppress our women. It's hard, bro. Well, we use the Bible. <laughs> we use the Bible because because that's what the man is supposed to do. And see, that's the other thing. We want to be right and good and pleasing in his sight. And who is he? See how that works? He don't look like me and you. See how that work? So we have an allegiance that goes way back, but we don't we don't see it because that's what oppression do. 
first of all, I'm, I'm being a little facetious, man, but I'm also being educated uh, here, and I'm thinking about the numbers. Only 37% of our kids grow up uh -huh. in a household with functioning adults. Uh huh. Right? And that's questionable. Right now, the, yeah, we have 37% <laughs> right. number. What, right. what is that functioning look like? Right. What is that functioning look like? Right. And and then in the war, in the battle between mm -hmm. uh, black men and black women is mm -hmm. escalated. In yes, many cases, right. of them, them saying me to and us saying us to, right. not we. Right. Wow. Right. Well, because we want to compete for who's more oppressed. But I, I say this. There's no one who has been more oppressed than black women because there, there have been laws done for this. There have been, I mean, that, again, the black woman has been the, the one that's invisible in the struggle. Shaq, my brother Shaq, man, I take care of my woman. I, I know. pay the rent, I know. man, I pay the note, man. I know. I'm there, man. I, I put, know. I put a roof over I know. my head, man. We, so what, what, more, what, more, what more are we supposed to do? Do the, in, the internal work? Because here's the, here's the challenge, and this is what black women's leadership has shown us, how to do both and. You see what I'm saying? They, they do both and. They don't do one thing. we don't even honor them when they're in leadership roles. But, but, we set traps for them to fail. But they're the best leaders. Who better, who better to lead than somebody who's been oh, oppressed for their brother, entire brother, life? Brother Shaq. Because who else knows how to actually do that? See, for us, it's theory. That's why we are very good at intellectualizing emotions and feelings. We'll talk about it, but, but really living through it and experiencing it and that informing our work? Oh, no, no. That ain't what we do. That ain't safe. Uh, tear up your man Bible. Uh, <laughs> blow it up just like uh, uh, Don Morell and his uh, he this brother dedicated a whole chapter man to the difficulty of having unconditional relationships given oh, yeah. what we've been what we've been fed and how we've been uh, conditioned uh, uh, brother Shaq uh, we're going to go to a break but when we come back mm -hmm. right first of all uh, I want, I'm definitely going to buy this book because okay. you know I have a young seed Yes. You know, as a young man and young woman in my life, I have an older daughter. Right. And before I leave this earth, uh, I would like to be the best man. I'd yes. like to be the best black man. That's right. Th that I can be. So I, not only am I going to read this book, but I'm going to understand the principles of it. So right when on. we come back, some of the things we can do, right, uh, not only to get this book, but to support this movement and be part of the solution. Right on. Brother Shaq, man. I'm what a hip. powerful conversation. We'll be back after the break. Right on. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. It's. It's, it's, it's hard hitting, and what this is about is about the relationship black women have to the rest of us. Yeah. Everything, like even the whole concept of rape culture, that's about white women, man. Mm -hmm. That ain't got nothing to do with black women. Right. It never did. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, the, and again, the invisibilization. But there was, a, I found through, through my work when I, uh, as, a, as a core trainer with People's Institute, we we do a piece of, of history, we deal with this Act 12 from 16, I want to say 1691, mm -hmm. where they codified essentially rape and enslaved African women. They codified yeah. it. That ain't never happened to no other group of women. Right, no. That ain't never happened. Right. That's like, right. This, the legacy of what it is to be a black woman right. in America is, is, again, but because it's a black woman, it's invisible. Right. Ain't nobody looking and ain't nobody got to look, because what they going to do about it? Right. Nothing. So I'm saying if we want to really liberate ourselves, we'll have to do this work. Well, you know, most of the social scientists and sociologists, when you read uh, the books, they talk about uh, the strength of the woman is actually the strength of the strength of us. Okay. Uh, okay. Right on. It's, it's actually the strength of our culture and our family. But, oh, but yeah. you're absolutely this whole sense of patriarchy. And, and I like what you said earlier about even when you think you're doing it right, you're judging it by your standard. Right. So you have a standard of what you think a good woman is. Right. You have a standard of what you think a good relationship is. Right. You have a standard of what you think a good partner is. And you have the power to impose is. that standard. Because of that partial provisional membership, you impose that standard. And if they don't like it, then they got the problem. Because how they, they, how they going to mess up a good thing? Because we all know the brothers that are on the other end of the spectrum that are clearly not Absolutely. good men. So we understand that it should be, you should be glad that you got me there. You know what I'm saying? So what's the incentive for us? Talk I'm talking about me, bro. <laughs> I'm talking about me. <laughs> well, I can't stand you. <laughs> I'm talking about me. Brother, brother, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, WB OK. Right on, man. 12.30 a.m. <laughs> uh, what in the world?
is talking about uh, man, Savior, Teacher, Soul Reacher, man. Uh, but first of all, Brother Shaq, I'm going to ask you before we get into some of these solutions. Uh, sure. This work was it painful for you in terms of looking at yourself uh, and, and looking at many of us who think we're good brothers, but haven't done the internal work to get to get that other perspective. Man, you have not been battle tested until you have warred with the white man that's in your mind and what he has told you about yourself and your people. You have not been battle tested. Man, this, this hurt like nothing I've experienced because I couldn't believe that, you know, I was, my behavior, like I was complicit in it. And it's hard because what I know from being a black man and listening to black men, that black men are in fact, perhaps the most sensitive beings on the planet. We are the most sensitive. We care about what you thought, what you said, who you said it to, we care about all of that. And I'll love you and I'll kill you over it. Right. That's real sensitive, wow. ain't it? That's sensitive. And then we have to hold up to this thing, well, I don't really care about that. And so there's this internal struggle. And that's just all our stuff. So we got to do all that kind of stuff just to get to us, you know, before we even deal with anybody else. And a lot of the times, again, because we can impose our standards mm -hmm. with impunity, because we have this limited partial provisional membership in the white man's patriarchy, that, that so it, it's it's unchallenged like if you really want to know what makes brothers really angry it is simply that we are not white men that's what it is 504 <laughs> 582 9422 because we don't get the white man treatment meaning see white men don't get checked but black men do don't they the whole system check will check you that's step, right step out of line that's right so we don't like that so that's why when we get home, we want to create a little situation for ourselves where we don't get checked. So we will, we will make sure we hold, we, 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 we will be very paternal. So we have somebody to take it out on? Well, yeah, to respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we need to oppress somebody because, again, we're looking up, we're looking up at who the man is, well, and it ain't us. We got a caller, man. Okay. Uh, Mike from Metairie. Right uh, on. Line number one. Mike, you're on with uh, Brother Shaq, one of the leaders of the True Love Movement. Hey, hey, what's happening? Absolutely. Does every white man think the same? I have no idea. I've never been a white man, uh, and I've never sat inside of a white man's mind. So, so you, you just said that uh, walking with a white man is the most oppressive thing you've ever done. Every white man thinks every black man thinks the same. Well, no, but he, here's what I will tell you. Here's what I will tell you. No, that nobody, we don't think the same, but part of Part of what, I don't know if you're familiar with a term called internalized racial oppression, it has two forms, internalized racial inferiority and internalized racial superiority. And so internalized racial superiority, those men or those people who have come to be called white, well, they have that. They've internalized the idea that they are superior. And one of the manifestations of that is individualism. So see, individual, what the white man can do is think in terms of an individual. However, black folks are collectivized. So we don't have the individual opportunity. We experience this America as, collect, as a part of a collective. So even though individual black men may think differently, they are still dealt with as a collective because of a social construct that they did not create, but which oppresses them. No, cognitive dissonance is also. They do. Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Uh huh. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I like that. Okay. Th I Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Mike, Mike. Hey Mike, we're about to, uh, you know, we, we got a break, you know, time skip, but thank you so much, man. We appreciate you. Bless you. Brother Sack, a powerful point that he made. He did. I like exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. He said, if anyone is discriminated mm -hmm. against, I am against that. And that exactly is, that is what I'm talking about in terms of manifestation of individuality. See, he's against yes. it, but him being against it don't stop it from happening. See how that worked? See, he's against it. Right. That doesn't stop the construct the from doing what the, the system, construct the does. The system that was created, the response Correct. from the system. Correct. Or institution. And he has the he has the option to say, I'm going to opt out of it. But that doesn't prevent it from happening. I have never thought about it like that. Being, being an individual person who says, man, you know, 
uh, I feel a certain way. If it doesn't impact the, the, the collective, it has no impact on the people that have been oppressed. Listen, that's that's the whole point. The whole end of point. The whole individual thing. When you can experience You're not this saying life. Mike could be the most wonderful person as an individual that you've ever met. Absolutely. And I, I believe what he said. Yeah. I believe that he is and totally he against discrimination. I'm clear about that. However, him being against discrimination as an individual does not prevent you from being discriminated against, does not prevent right. discrimination from existing and being supported by systems and institutions. And our studio guests are going, amen. And uh, Sister Karen uh, uh, Will Will Tender, she's been amen since you started talking. Uh, first of all, Brother Shaq, uh, uh, I definitely want to get my copy of the book. I want to right buy on. one. I think that's important. How can people get a copy of the book? How can they come to the book release? Right. And how can we as men... A couple of things we can do, mm -hmm. right, to be part of this movement, of, of be part of it, reconditioning ourselves. Right. Well, the first, the first thing I'd say, the book, the book will be coming out on Black Love Day, uh, which is uh, February thirteenth over at Community Book Center, twenty five twenty three Bayou Road, um, and you know that's that's important because again, Black Love Day. I, I wanted to be clear that this is not a, a book against black men or any. of This is a, a book of, of loving black right. people. That's an actionable thing. Right. The challenge is for us to look at ourselves and not what's wrong with us, but what happened to all of us. We're responding to this oppression, man. We don't mean to do none of this. But until we can have a lens on how this came to be, we're going to keep on hitting each other because we think we're the problem and we're not the problem. We are not. We are responding to the problem. Sounds like there's a part two and part three in a continuation. Man, let me tell you, bro. And the, and the other thing that we can do in terms of Right now, for, for, for this, because see, this is for black folk. That's the right. other part of it. This right. is for black folk. This is for black people who are responding to this oppression. Right. This ain't for everybody, because it ain't everybody issue. It ain't never been. But it's interesting how other people have positions and opinions on it, because they can assert those. Brother Shaq, uh, see how, how that works? Out to you? Uh, uh, www.truelovemovement.com. You can like True Love Movement on Facebook. Follow True Love Movement on Instagram. And the book release. And the book release is on February 13th, 2020. Uh, at Community Book Center right there at 630. It's the day man. before Valentine's Day. That's right, but it's the day of Black Love Day, which again, that's to me, is a little bit more important. You promise to come back as we follow this If, truth, you, this, if, this you, truth if you will have me. Yeah, we will if have you have back <laughs> for more than 20 minutes. <laughs> if you'll have me. Next man. time, man. But I really appreciate the opportunity, man. Really and thank you to the callers and the listeners and everybody on the, the lives. We man. appreciate, we appreciate it. When we come back, man, Karen Willis Henry, a family historian. Your family history is black history. Genealogy made easy. Laws. Talk about connecting back to our history, right on. that might be a way of connecting forward to the true love movement. We'll right be back on. with Karen Willis Henry after the break. Right on, OG. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you, OG. Whoa. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. This book is, is, a, is a lot, man. It's a lot. No, man. The, 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 all that work all these years, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's liberated me. Yeah. But it's, 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 even to the to the degree that it would be perceived as something adversarial is an is an indicator of how we feel about black women right. and black people. You know what I'm saying? Like what you mean? Blah blah blah. Like, what do you mean? What because black men are starting to uh, we start to feel like where is our place? Do we have a place? Because we see our women being celebrated, we see them celebrating themselves, and right. in many cases we don't see a place. And I, 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 I usually take a look at organizations that are led by black women. Uh -huh. And in many times, those and organizations... True Love Movement is one. Those organizations, mm -hmm. but y'all are one of the few organizations mm -hmm. that'll have a black man in a leading role. Mm -hmm. Many nonprofits now, many major organizations... But I'm cold. We cold it. You know, it's really black women, They usually don't have any black men working with them. Right, because of the presumptive adversarial relationship. Well, you hit out the park oh, on yes, Mike, did. bro. Huh? You Mike? out the park on Mike. My man, Mike. Mike. Yes, sir. <laughs> you said they called us. I did. <laughs> I did. All right, family. Y'all share the show.